let's be honest, this isn't going to happen before the election, is it? And not as far as I can tell, no. So when? What, well, what, what's a, your timeline? That's a really good question, right? Uh, well, the nice thing is that there's multiple efforts underway and people are working as hard as they can to bring these uh, vaccines to market them, to scale them up in anticipation of, uh, of the final approvals. So it's, I would hesitate to comment on precisely when these will emerge, but I think given the number of efforts that are going in parallel and given the early signs, I think there's reason to be optimistic that by early next year, you will start seeing distributions of these vaccines, or at least one of them. Okay. Okay. So that's more optimistic than some have, have, have seemed. Do you agree with the FDA's measures here? Should they be more or less conservative? You know, I think you know, the, the FDA has to strike the balance here. It's absolutely imperative to be, uh, to be cautious and make sure that the safety is as much guaranteed as we can, as can be. At the same time, we are racing against the clock here, right? The pandemic is, uh, is, is raging out there. And the sooner we can get the vaccine delivered to, to the millions and then billions of people out there, the better. And I think the FDA has demonstrated a good amount of independence. So on balance, I think they're striking, they're, they're, they're striking the right balance here. So you have been a critical force in providing resources, researchers with the tools and technology necessary to conduct COVID R&D. You know, we have talked about how uh, scientists are collaborating more than they ever have in history on getting this done. What are some of the highlights of uh, the research and development that you think really stand out? Well, there have been a lot across the board. Uh, you know, our specific, uh, our, our products, our tools have now been used in well over 300 different laboratories, uh, making significant advances in terms of understanding, understanding the virus, understanding the progression of it as it infects people, and understanding why some people respond well and some uh, and, and some don't. Uh, one of the main areas where that has been particularly encouraging when we look at the therapeutic side is this development of antibodies uh, for monoclonal antibodies to fight, uh, to fight the disease. And of course, that's now getting to be very close to actual, uh, you know, getting close to patients. So uh, that has definitely stood out. But in general, I would say across the board, the speed with which we have learned about this disease given that it really did not exist until uh, until this year, it is remarkable. And uh, the, the the amount of collaboration and the, the, the focus that has been brought to bear on this disease by scientists all across the world has been has been truly remarkable. I made the comment back early on in April and it has only uh, that, that trajectory has only kept up. Now, speaking of treatment, I know you're providing support to scientists, including a lung study in China for potential antibodies. The president of the United States has COVID. He has received a number of drugs, drugs that are not available to the general public, so that if people got COVID today, they wouldn't get the same standard of care that the president is getting. When will um, regular, ordinary people who contract this disease be able to get these treatments that seem to have served the president well? Um, I mean, that's a, that's a key question. And this is why people, I know the companies have been developing them, have been racing, uh, racing ahead to actually to get to the clinical trials, but also in anticipation of uh, those treatments actually getting approved, scaling up their manufacturing. So I, it's hard to tell precisely when they'll be more widely available, but I know the intentions are there and people are scaling up manufacturing of those uh, antibodies uh, ahead, uh, ahead of uh, their, their availability. I do think that it's going to become available in waves. Uh, first, probably to first responder workers in hospitals, more um, likely more vulnerable populations such as nursing homes or people with uh, uh, you know, with the comorbidity conditions, and then hopefully wider as well. Um, it's not, I'm not sure okay. if it's imminent, but it's, it's coming. 